am super excited about tonight. Um, I got to share with the praise and worship team on Thursday night that um, tonight I'm actually breaking goals that I set for myself this year. Isn't that exciting? Do you set goals for yourself? I just broke another one today, <laughs> so I'm super excited about that. I made my goal really low for the year. <laughs> So pastor had been talking to me about, okay, Canada, it's time for you to step up. God said you need to do it. And I was never ready. I would be like, nope, I'm good. I'm good. I've been taking care of the babies. I've been taking care of the kids and the youth and the, I'm good. I'll just be, I'll assist and I'm singing. I'm singing. So I'm good. I'm singing and I don't need to and preach. I'm, I'm good. Right. <laughs> God's pretty funny. Um, so every time I would go to Bethel or somewhere else, and Ivan, you just got to come back from Bethel. So excited to hear all the fun things that you got to learn. Was it a business conference? Is that what was going on? Yes. Awesome. Very good. Awesome. Um, so anyway, that's exactly what everybody would come up to me and say. Jesus is wanting, he's wanting you to go, you know, go out and get out there and start preaching and teaching. And and he's, and he's seeing you hold back like this. <laughs> Okay, I said yes, I said yes. So this year, I put it in my goals. Put it in the planner, put it in the goals, and my goal for this year was to at least preach one time <laughs> in the last six months of the year. <laughs> so this was in January. I was planning for the last six months to at least do one time, just one. Well, this is my third time now to preach, so I've just blown that right out of the water. Woo! <laughs> and you know what? I'm having fun. I am really excited about this, and really when, I'm, when I kind of get started in an area that God's wanting me to share, I start gathering all this information, and I'm like, oh, I don't think I can get done at one time. I think I need to preach again. <laughs> so I think God's got a funny sense of humor, and I'm sure he's just up there going, hee <laughs> But, um, wow, there's so much to say. Um, break free from lim limiting mindsets. A lot of what I'm going to bring to you today is just going to be scratching the surface of this, okay? Just scratching the surface. So I'm literally giving you lots of information to hopefully internally stir you up, okay? To stir you up so that you start looking into this more, studying this more, meditating on this, okay? And I've brought some things for you to take home so that you can do that. But break free from limiting mindset. Um, some of the information that I'm going to bring to you is coming out of the book, The Greatest Secret. Um, it's by Ron McIntosh, forwarded by Miles Monroe. Love Miles Monroe. Um, God's Law of Attraction for Lasting Happiness, Fulfillment, Health, and Abundance in Life. Who can say yes to that, right? So this is a great book. If you've not read it, be sure and get it. Um, I'm going to actually be taking our kids through this because it's that good. Um, all right, here is something that God showed me even as a young person, a, a youth. Um, it's for all people, all humans, all of us. In different areas of life, we tend to be backed into a corner, right? Or maybe even we put ourselves in a box, okay? So this is kind of my one theme that I've really, God's really just had me focus on a lot over my life, um, just because, and this is a side note real quick, I haven't even gotten started and there's already a side note. Um, something that if you have always been the kind of person that everybody comes up to you, not everybody, but certain people come up to you and they start telling you everything about their life and they are confiding in you. And I'm not sure why I'm telling you all of this, but blah, 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 blah right? Well, welcome to the ministry because <laughs> that might mean you have a pastoral heart. Okay. That this is something that has been happening to me ever since even junior high and high school, right? And um, I didn't ever know why people like, they might have been my friends, but maybe just acquaintances, and I didn't really know too much about them. But for whatever reason, I'd be in the same room with them and nobody else would be around, and they'd start telling me all their stuff. And God would give me 
things to give them. They would, they, and then they would come back to me and ask for more. And I was just like, wow, God, you're so awesome. So he gave me wisdom at a young age to share with other people. So maybe they wouldn't go down a path that they were thinking about going down, whether it be killing themselves or smoking or whatever it is that they were thinking about doing, right? Never did I know that I would one day be a pastor. Isn't that neat? So if you have that, it's a gift and, and, you know, love it, enjoy it, and give people Jesus' love. Amen? Okay, so back to the box. So what I saw growing up with every person in every stage of life and age, okay? So this is for everyone, what I would see is either they had put themselves in a box or they would back themselves to where they into something that they would never want to break out and totally be all that they could be for God. Totally be all that they are. Like I would see the potential in them. I would see the gold that God put in them. They were, the, everybody is amazing. God created each and every one of you for amazing, awesome things in your life. And then I would see you know, Satan would just tear people down, whether it be from a trauma, a circumstance, you know, maybe where you were born, lies that you believed about yourself, whatever it might be. Satan's goal for you was for you to never believe that you could or can. That's the goal for him, right? Um, for, for you to never believe what the Bible says you can do, which is, I can do all things, right, through Christ, which strengthens me. Satan's goal was for you to never fulfill your destiny and passions for God. Because Satan does know the word of God. You know that? And it says in Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare, for good, and not for evil to give you a future and a hope, right? But if you don't know that and you don't see that, where does that put you? If Satan can keep your eyes covered by that truth, from that truth, then you won't ever step out and do things extraordinary that God created you to do, right? We are world changers. We're world changers. We may be in one city, but we are world changers. You have to know this, and you have to go after that, right? But here's the other thing I wanted to bring to you tonight. I would like to propose to you that it's not always just Satan. It is you. (laughs) You. You, your thoughts about yourself, self-hate, and what you're believing in your heart against yourself is what is holding you in prison and in captivity. So I want to help us tonight with just even scratching the surface of thinking about this, okay, focusing on this so that you can break out of that prison and be free. My question to all of you today is, are you ready to break free today? Are you ready to be free? And, you know, there might be areas that you are free in, and that's awesome. We're talking about the areas that you're not free. And it's not for me to pick that out in you. It's not for others to pick that out in you. It's for you and God to talk about and you and God to unlock those things, okay? So I give you permission to be free tonight in Jesus' name. And then you have to make a decision and act on it, all right? So some of this information also is coming from a neuroscientist, Caroline Leaf. And if you've ever gotten to hear her, she's amazing. So a lot of this information is coming from her, so it's very scientific and very, you know, awesome. (laughs) All right. So the more you help others, the more you increase your intelligence, health, and your longevity. God has given each of us, each one of us, passion for our destiny. We need to find that passion and allow it to come out. Okay? God created that in you. If our mindset is not right, it won't come out. 
won't do it. Nobody's going to make it come out, right? It's not going to happen. And we'll always be dissatisfied. We'll always walk around whining and moaning and complaining about all the things that have happened to us and turning around and looking at what everybody else has and what we don't have, right? Wanting what somebody else has. Meanwhile, we're being a lousy us. And instead, we should be a great us. So God wants you to be great, not looking at what everybody else has. So if you keep whining, moaning, complaining, wanting what everybody else got, guess what? This is really interesting. Your brain is busy dying. Boo, exactly. Your brain is busy dying. Who wants that? Because your brain is not designed for that. Your brain controls your body. Your body is affected by what you say, what you do, and how you are thinking. Let me just let that sink in for a moment. Your body is affected by what you say, do, and, and how you are thinking. When God tells us to bring all of our thoughts into captivity through Jesus Christ... That's why this is so very important that we do it. Because our body is literally affected by our thoughts. We all know that we need to renew our minds. We know that renewing our minds is a process, right? Neuroplasty is neuro. So neuro means brain. And plasty means to change. God designed us to control our brain not for our brain to control us. Good? You are not a victim of your bio biology. You, can, you cannot control what situations have happened to you in life, but you can control what your response and reaction to the events and situations of your life. It's good, right? So... Learning how to recognize what God has placed within you. As you recognize this, that orphan spirit starts to leave. Isn't this good? I'm so excited. And then you realize you were designed for a constant internal dialogue with God. A constant internal dialogue connection talking, communion, communion with God. Amen? God is not a God that wants you to get consumed with all of your own issues in your life. He is a God that says, bring it to me and I'll heal it. Bring it to me and I'll heal it so that you can be free to go and do, right? What you're supposed to do in life. There's different laws, and I'm not going to go into all the laws, because when I started studying all of this, there's all kinds of physics laws and just general laws of science that are in place in the world for everything to function just perfectly. God is amazing, isn't he? One of the laws is laws of correspondence. Your outer world, so the outer world here, is in direct correspondence to your inner world. If you want change for your output, guess what? You're going to have to change what you input. Exactly. How you ask? Well, I'm about to tell you. So excited. Are you taking notes? All right. To achieve a new level of living, you have to get rid of your old ways of thinking and replace them with new thoughts. Once a new dominant thought takes root in your heart and your mind, then they will bring out or bring about new actions that result in new manifestations. Okay? So new thoughts bring new actions. Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Right? We all know that. But think in this scripture right here. Think means doorkeeper and gatekeeper, doorkeeper or 
gatekeeper. So as a man thinks with his doorkeeper and his gatekeeper in his heart, so is he. In other words, dominant thoughts are the gatekeeper of your heart. What gets in your heart is what you're going to do. Right? It doesn't mean that it maybe, possibly, probably will happen. No. It will happen. It will. You do whatever's on your heart. Proverbs 4.23 says, Keep and guard your heart with all vigilance or diligence, and above all else that you guard. Guard your heart, for out of it flows the springs and issues of life. There are several things um, that are very essential here. Above all else means the highest priority of your life is to guard your heart. Did you know that? Did you know? I don't wake up every day saying, oh, my highest priority today <laughs> is to guard my heart. I, I didn't think about it. Did it mean I didn't do it? No, but now that I know to do that, now I can give thought and attention to that, right? And then I can make it happen. So it says, above all else means the highest priority of your life is to guard your heart. For out of it comes the manifestations or the issues of life. Guard your heart, for out of it comes the issues. So issues of life. Issues means boundaries, limitations, and stagnations. So that's what the issues word means. Boundaries, limitations, and stagnations. Your boundaries in your life are not the product of your background, your education, or your, or your race by themselves. Okay? So it's all together. Those can have a factor, but it's not the only factor. Right? They are not, they are not about what your mother and father said or what your friends did. Your boundaries are about one thing, and it's what is in your heart. If you want to change your manifestations, change your limitations, change your boundaries, you must change your heart. So a lot of us here know that our body, we are made up as a spirit, soul, and body, right? Well, the soul is the mind, the will, emotion, and imagination. That covers a lot. That's your soul. The soul is the area that is processing and building all of these thoughts into something real. It makes it a real thing. So there are actual changes happening in your brain, and whatever is going on in the soul, which is your mind, your will, emotions, and imagination, will affect your spirit and your body. So if our thoughts are filled with chaos, in the mind, then guess what? Chaos is going to be in your body. So are you seeing where this is going with healing? Wow. Now this is a, a fact. Scientists are finding that 87% um, to 95%, that's a huge percentage, of current mental, emotional, and physical illness comes out of your thought life. 87% to 95%. That's a lot. So wouldn't that show you, just if that's in reality what scientists are finding out, if it's that high of a percentage, shouldn't we be looking at what we're thinking about? What we're speaking, right? That's highly important. All right, so Proverbs 23, 7 says, again, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Thoughts take up mental real estate in your mind. So think about your mind having so much space, right? Well, each thought takes up different space in there as real estate. This is a fun fact. The brain processes 400 billion actions per second. 400 billion actions per second. I can't even imagine how fast that is, really. The process of the unconscious mind is building memory as we sit here today listening to this information. So as you're sitting here listening, 
your mind is working so fast and building memories right now. So if you don't think about what is said here tonight, guess how fast you'll lose it? <laughs> Less than 24 to 48 hours. If you don't think about, if you don't go home and take out your notes and rethink about what we've talked about tonight, you'll lose it. So here's a great example about um, what our brain does, what our mind does. Everything comes into the brain by our five senses, right? So it converts what comes in through our five senses as we think about it. So as we think about it, it's converting, it's working. It's helping us make choices, and it's converting it into a structural thing in your brain. That is, um, that is a thought, and they look like trees in your brain. So that's why I have these little props up here. So literally, this is what a bad thought looks like in your brain. It literally looks like a tree, and it looks dark, and it looks dead, and kind of wiry. It's what a bad thought, or a negative thought looks like. And then in the brain, now this is a little bit more elaborate, but <laughs> um, just think of like a longer stem within this coming off. This is a healthy thought in your brain. It's green. They literally can see color. It's green, and then the bad thoughts are black. Isn't that amazing? God is so awesome. I love it. So the green represents, again, good and healthy thoughts, the black or the dark represents toxic and unhealthy thoughts. So every, or so very inf uh, interesting information is we, they have found that we have over three million years of space in our brain to build memories. Three million years. That's pretty awesome. Means we're not using our brains as much as we could, right? <laughs> This is what scientists now understand just with the basics of brain, okay? So that's how much they can see and understand right now. And they're saying they only know the basics. That's pretty interesting. And you know how science is always catching up with what God already said, right? So we're just, you know, kind of confirming here with science what God has already said. But here's a lie that people believe, and um, we're going to kind of go after this a little bit. The lie that people believe is because I can't see my thought, that it's harmless. Right? No. A thought is real. It occupies mental real estate in your brain. As I am speaking, the branches on your trees are growing while you're listening and I'm speaking. Right? So it's, it's literally a thing in your brain growing. So, you know, God is so good. He gave us choice. God gave us the choice of free will. But God also gave us an open book test. Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, I have set before you life, and I have set before you death. What does he say? Choose life. Choose life, right? Choose life. And he says that so that you and your descendants will live. This is living with good thoughts, living. This is the bad thoughts, dying. So that things may live by choosing good and positive things and building healthy trees in our brains. If we make bad choices, you build toxic trees. Toxic trees, when you think of bad thoughts, make bad choices, hang on to anything that is negative, like Anger, frustration, frustration, abuse, irritation, etc. All the negative things, all the negative sides of our emotions. If we hang on to them, this is what they look like in our brains. Do you want your brain to be cluttered with dead, dark, ugly trees? No, we don't. That's right. So it is... Let's see. It is not a harmless thing. It is a physical change that occurs in your brain. So literally your brain is changing. We all are designed that every time we think, we are wired to build thoughts. 
As we're thinking, if we choose to build thoughts that are in a negative direction, we still are going to build those bad thoughts. They still are getting built. But did you know that scientists say, now scientists have proved this, and we already know this. We sing about it all the time. We're wired for love. Our bodies are literally wired for love. Scientists can prove that now. We're wired for love. So they were talking about how when these negative thoughts come into our body, chemically, our body has to get all these chemicals together because they don't understand what our bodies, our brain does not understand what this negative thought is because our bodies are wired for love. Isn't that, ex isn't that exciting? This is so interesting to me. So when a negative thought comes into our, our minds or bad things come into our heart and our minds, our bodies have to throw extra chemicals at it because it really doesn't know what that is. So that's when stress comes in. That's when bad things in your body come in because your body is literally trying to throw chemicals at it, trying to figure out what's going on. But we're wired to be healthy, okay? So because we are wired for love, when we choose the negative, it is not the norm. It's a hijack. So that's when the chemicals, right, come in. Renew the mind with the word of God, positive thinking, positive speaking. The mind, I love this, the mind can rewire itself. <laughs> God's awesome. The mind can rewire the brain. The brain can change. God gave us the ability to change our own brain. Wow. Um, they have proven that people that have had strokes and different mental disabilities and different things like that, they literally can rewire their brain and they can learn. And they can think people that are, we're supposed to have been a vegetable, they're now working and thinking and breathing and doing everything in, everything that they were supposed to be doing in life because they help them rewire their brain. So we are never too old to stop learning. We are never too old to start speaking those good things into our life. We don't have to keep going down the same path that we've always had, right? Because it can be rewired. When we are aware of this, then we can intentionally go about this. We can intentionally go after it. And that's what you have to do. You, you can't give place to the devil so that he can kill, steal, and destroy, right? So you have to intentionally guard your mind. It's like when you're in the garden and you're watching the weeds and you're pulling the weeds. You have to be intentional about those stinky weeds because they come in quicker than you can even think about it. And with all this rain, wow, it's been crazy, right? So they come in, the weeds come in so quickly. So you have to be intentional about getting those weeds and getting them out quickly. Getting those bad thoughts and getting them out quickly. Um, I, I don't like myself today. I don't like what I'm wearing today. I look ugly today. I'm not going to pass that test today. All these bad thoughts that come in, you grab it and you throw it out. It doesn't belong in your mind. It's taking up space that it doesn't need to be there. So they were just, um, Carolyn Leaf was really talking about how we're wired for love, but we have learned fear. What happened when you go into fear, anxious, negative, you know, it causes the effect on our body, stress. Now she was talking about there is three stages of stress. The first, the first one is a good stress. There are good stresses. It's the one that actually gets you motivated to get things done. That's good. You got to have some, you know, things in order to get things done. The other ones that come in when there's worry and thoughts and bad thoughts and start getting into stress that's overloaded and that your body can't handle, and you have to throw those out. So I'm coming to a close here. Supernatural good news. It only takes 21 days to rewire your brain. 21 days to start a new thought, a new way in your brain and in your thinking. So we make a decision that a bad thought is not good for us. And just like in Mark 11, 22 and 23, we speak to that mountain. So you have to speak it with your mouth. You can't just think it. Speak it with your mouth. And that thought in your brain is that mountain that we're talking about. You speak to that mountain and 
1 John 4.18 says, perfect love expels fear. So when you speak the word of God in, um, in your thoughts, when you pray, when you sing, when you worship, you make a decision to, pl- to um, and make a decision to apply the word of God in your thoughts. Then it will affect every area of your life for the good. Health, relationships, destiny, and have a happy and healthy life. Who's ready to, to break free and of those limiting mindsets? Do you want to be limited anymore? I don't. I don't. And you know, like again, I said, there, there's so many areas I feel free in, but there's still some areas, just like with speaking, right? I was sharing with you earlier. I wasn't ready for that. I didn't want, I didn't really see the need, really. <laughs> and I'm going after it. I'm getting rid of my stinking thinking and I'm going after it, right? So um, take the limits off. I want to encourage you to take the limits off of your brain because it's you putting those limits there. So God is not limiting us. We can use our brains, and he created us to use our brains and rewire our brains with the word of God and positive thinking. Amen? All right. Father, I just thank you and I praise you. Father, that we just scratched the surface of this exciting information that we can rewire our brain, and our brain does not control us. Father, we thank you that you are a big, awesome, creative God. And we just thank you and praise you that you give us inventions, you give us new technology, innovative ways. Father, I thank you that we are ever increasing in knowledge, ever increasing in knowledge and ever increasing in your ways, Father God, in your ways, the way you think, the way you love, Father. So, Father, I just thank you and praise you that there's a new level for everybody to go to after today, new levels and no limits can stop where that level stops. Father, I thank you that the limits are off and we are courageous and amazing Christians, Father, that serve you with our full, amazing brain that you gave us, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, to help you further, I put together some daily things for you to think on and to speak over your life. Because it's not okay just to know this information, but then you have to actually apply the information, and put the Word of God in your brain. Put the Word of God in your heart, right? So I have, um, I've got them right here, and at the end of service, you can come up and get them. Yep, they're right there. Thank you. You can hand them out. And then there's also declarations. So I've got um, several scriptures that you can speak over your life that's putting the Word of God in your, in your life. And then declarations over your life. So just great things to speak over you. You know, there's, um, there was, as you're getting those, um, there was just some interviews that even some of the uh, Hollywood stars, like movie stars, were talking about how they didn't quit. They just set their, their focus. They set their focus and they just never stopped, right? Um, they would even write things down, like, I see this in my future. What are you seeing in your future? Have you thought about your future? Does it need to change? Or, or is everything great and you don't need anything new and you're helping everybody the way you want to help and you've paid off people's homes and you've uh, paid for an orphanage across the water? You know, is everything great or is there more that you want to do in your heart? Well, I just want to encourage you to go there. Think about it. Uh, dream about it. Ask God how to do it, right? He'll give you that information and then start speaking those things over you in your life. And let's see what God does in the next month. And I want to hear some testimonies of what God does. Well, I love you guys. Um, everybody stand. It's a declaration. It says, I now release. So we're going to say that one together. Ready? I now release the champion that is inside of me. I release that inner winner. I am the leader 
that, that multitudes of people are looking for. I choose to succeed today and every day hereafter. Amen. <laughs>